Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday at 2 o'clock here in the downtown studios of Think Tech Hawaii and Pioneer Plaza. We're a show that talks about positive stories of business and their owners in Hawaii. And occasionally we'll bring on people as guests to talk a little bit about organizations that help support business in Hawaii uh, to increase the chances and probability of success. And today we have one of those guests, uh, Renee Green, who is with the University of Phoenix uh, and heads up their uh, business programs uh, for the uh, University of Phoenix here in Hawaii. Uh, Renee, thank you for being on the show today. Oh, thank you, Reg, for inviting me. Now, you've, um, you've been with the University of Phoenix for a while, but you had an interesting beginning to your career. Can you share with us a little bit about uh, your background and how you got into, uh, to Hawaii? Sure. Well, you know, I grew up in a low socioeconomic background in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and always knew I wanted to do something different. You know, I've seen that people sometimes they go straight to college, some people go in the military, and some people go to work. So for me, it was the military. So I kind of started my career path there. Well, you know, and that's a great way to get a start because I, yes. I did the same thing. I, uh, I grew up in a... a an area that wasn't the, the wealthiest yes. uh, and a way to get out of the neighborhood was to go into the Navy in my case yes. uh, and the Navy really provided some good structure and, and discipline that I needed uh, and it just kind of took off from there and I think you went into the Army? Yes I did. Yeah, but you yes. were there for a while. I was in the Navy only four <laughs> years. You were in the Army for a little longer. Yes, I was in the Army for 20 years. It was so many great things that I was exposed to that I decided to make it a career. Very good. And you got to do some traveling? Yes, I spent most of my time when I was in the military in Germany. And that was a great experience for me because it gave me the opportunity to be able to experience different cultures, to be able to get exposed to different environments and do different things. Right. And the Army was a great place to get some education, some training yes, too, right? Yes, yes. You know, th that was... Um, Probably the thing that I like most about the military is that training, because each level of leadership you transition into, there was always um, formal schooling that you would go to, mm -hmm, and it was mm -hmm. a lot of training that took place within the organization. Right, and so you got the training, you got the travel, and you made a decent living, too. I mean, yes. it's, a, it's a good combination. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then when you got done, uh, there was this thing called the GI Bill. Yes, so I, you know, I did some of my schooling in the military, so I was able to transition up to my master's degree. Wow. And then, you know, I um, transitioned out of the military into corporate America and worked for some companies there and um, just, you know, um, decided one year that, you know, there's still more to learn and I went back to school to get my doctorate. Very yes. Good. And that was all on the mainland? Yes, that all took place. Well, now, my degrees, I did those in the military, so a lot of it was done in Germany. Mm -hmm. But then my doctorate degree was at the University of Phoenix online. Uh -huh. yes. So there's a connection there. Yes. Yeah. You know, and what's interesting, I think, about some of the courses that you are able to take in the Army or any military branch uh, can be done remotely. I mean, you can, you can attend an American university even though right. you are in Germany or right. Japan or wherever. Right. You can be on a aircraft carrier <laughs> and be attending college courses, right. right? They're very versatile and they understand the needs of their military soldiers and they try to, you know, um, cater education so that we all can participate no matter where we are at that particular point in time. Uh, it's a great benefit. You know, yes. So it did well for you. So you were, you were able to go through that, get all that experience and background, and then transition to corporate America, get your yes. doctorate degree. And then what motivated you to, to get into academia? Well, you know, I've always um, had people within my life to mentor me or inspire me. And I felt it was time in my life to give back to others after I received my um, doctorate degree. I wanted to be able to, you know, transition into academia life where I could share my experience with others and inspire them because I believe that everybody has that flame within inside of them 
that they can do whatever they want. They just can't give up. They got to keep fighting for it. Well, you know, and that's that's a message that needs to be sent out over and over and over again because you're a, you're a great inspiration because you've come from a, a challenging environment yes. and you've made it work, and you've uh, done very very well for yourself. Well, thank you. And now you're you're here in in Honolulu. So did you join University of Phoenix uh, directly here? Or did you work with them on the mainland first? Okay, so um, I had a little different path. So I started teaching in the University of Phoenix in uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin. And then I had an opportunity, I'm a very family-oriented person, so I had an opportunity to come over and help my oldest son who was in the um, Navy at the time and his wife with my four grandchildren. Uh -huh. So I kind of, you know, put my career on the side to help out. But once I got over here, I realized I was still young and I wanted to get back into you know, my, um, to my career. So then I um, applied to be an instructor at the University of Phoenix and later was hired, hired on. Yes. Wow, so, and that's, and so you actually have almost like a second career going now that you've uh, <laughs> you yes. started here and now you, you've worked your way up to yes. what I seem to think is a pretty senior role at the University of Phoenix in the, in the business school environment. Can you describe what do you do now with the University of Phoenix? Yes, I'm a campus college chair for the School of Business and what that is is an academic representative slash leader that oversees the School of Business and I um, oversee the College of IS of Information Systems and Technology. Wow, that's a lot. Yes. 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 Now what kind of programs uh, do they have at the University of Phoenix uh, in the College of, of Business? Okay, so we do offer an undergraduate and graduate degree in um, business management and also we offer um, undergraduate and graduate degree in IT. Wow, okay. And you've got I guess instructors and in who are these classes designed for? Well, these classes are uh, we have a unique target market is for work, working adults right. because okay. we understand that going to school is not all they do. They have other responsibilities in life, and one of them is working in their careers and also taking care of their family. Right. So we, you know, tailor our um, platform to be able to meet their needs. Right, and can these classes be taken remotely? Or yes. Yes, students can either come to the local campus or they can go online. Right, so you've got, do you have a military component to these classes? Do you have a lot of military attending? The, the yes, we do. You know, certain campuses, depending on where they're located, do have a military um, population okay. that come out there and, you know, get their education. And if they wanted to, they could come into the campus environment. You got one downtown and you got another one, don't you? Yes, it's in Kapolei, our right. learning centers, yes. And so can you go to either one, or are they interchangeable, or do you have to sign up for one and, and just stay to that campus? Well, I'm really not the right person to answer that because that's more of our um, academic and enrollment department. Okay. They are the ones who determine, you know, where those particular um, cohorts start. There's a lot of, there's flexibility in how that yes. can be all structured. Mm -hmm. And I guess the, the bottom line is that for the older student that's got some other obligations, right. uh, this provides an, you know, a platform for them to be able to continue right. their education almost on their own timetable, you know, and, and be able to attend the classes when they have the time to do it. Right, because, you know, classes are one day a week for four hours, so that frees up a little time to, you know, engage into other activities and also be able to study so that they can complete their degree. Right. Yes. Now, the University of Phoenix has been in Hawaii for quite a while, hasn't it? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they've kind of in integrated into the community and, and they do a lot of different community activities. Um, and I know you've got something that's, that's in the works that you've been working on. Uh, you want to share that with us a little bit? Yes, so we have our second annual technology and business conference that's coming up really quick. It's next Saturday, October the 15th. And I'm really excited. We had our first one last year around the same time, and it was a huge success in the community. Um, you know, people were really excited about a place to come and just share knowledge. Right. Yeah. And, you know, there's a, I, I guess it's important. This, this is being held out on the west side of the island, isn't it? No, it's right here downtown. Oh, is it downtown? Yes, wow. at downtown in our um, Honolulu campus. And it's going to be segment minute this year because we wanted to be able to accommodate more people. So they're going to come to our campus and register. And then we're going to escort them across the street to HPU. 
and we'll have our morning session there. That way people have the opportunity to see the whole morning session, uh -huh. not select which area. And then at around 1130, we'll transport them back over to our campus. Right. And we'll have lunch and breakout sessions. Now we've got a part of the flyer is showing on screen right now. Yes. And at the bottom right hand section is the website that people can go to sign up. Right. Right. And so if they went to that uh, website, they would find out more about the, uh, the conference? Right. It, it will talk about the different sec um, sections that they will be able to experience on that day. It also um, shares about who our um, keynote speakers are and some of the other speakers Very that good. we have for the day. And I guess is, there's a general session, or are there breakout sessions, or are there different tracks, or is it all pretty much kind of in sequence? Well, it's, um, we have a general session in which we'll have a keynote speaker, and then we'll have a panel. So we're trying to break it up a little bit. Good. You know, people speaking, panels, um, time for um, the attendees to ask questions. And then in the afternoon, it's going to be a little bit more concentrated. So you get to select which breakout session you want to go based on your needs. Right, and this is focused, and I noticed some of the topics in there are, are pretty focused in the IT area and the cybersecurity yes. and that sort of thing, uh, which is on top of everybody's mind these days. I <laughs> yes. mean, there's a lot of issues in that, that yeah. area. Um, but, but you've got some other good topics in there too. Can you just touch base on what some of the different topics are that's gonna be? Sure, so one of the things we're gonna talk about is supply chain management. Because all businesses, no matter what their, um, you know, end results are, they want to provide that great customer service experience to their client. And it doesn't matter if the product has to come from 3,000 miles away, it should be timely, effective, and efficient. And some insight will be shared around, you know, what that looks like and how can we get to that point. Another topic is going to be um, big data. So, you know, a lot of people may not know what that is what that is, and um, the speaker is going to share some information around system analysts and business analysts, how they can collect the data and what happens with it after they collect it. And I think the, the interesting part of that discussion is how can we use that, utilize that data for smart cities? See, and that's, you know, in, in the utilization of big data, yes. uh, and maybe we can touch base a little bit on that when we come back from break, but right now we need to take a 60-minute break. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're talking with the University of Phoenix right now and what they're doing for the business community in Hawaii, including a business conference that they've got coming up in about 10 days. Uh, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham with Think Tech Hawaii, and I'd like to ask you to come watch my show, The Economy in You, each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stan the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna. I hope you please visit us this summer. It's a wonderful summer. It's actually a cooler summer than we're used to. But I hope that you come back and visit us and watch our show, Education, Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, here on Think Tech Hawaii. It's at noon every Wednesday. See you then. Aloha and welcome to the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm the weekly host at 11 a.m. Honolulu time. Very excited for the next six weeks. We have the Aspire series, which is all about the coolest careers I could find and interviewing and getting insights from these amazing people who want to share it with you and help you live your dreams. Look forward to seeing you on the show. Aloha. Welcome back. This is Reg Baker, Business in Hawaii. We're here with the University of Phoenix. Uh, and I may have misspoke earlier. I said we'd be back in 60 minutes. And, of course, uh, we went right through that 60 minutes and, and we cut 59 minutes of it off. So we're doing good right now. Um, but we've got Renee Green here. She's uh, with the University of Phoenix. Uh, she's uh, got a very interesting uh, background, very successful. She's a, a good, uh, you know, I guess, example of, you know, the, the non-traditional way of becoming successful. And, and you know, that's great motivation. People got to understand that there is a lot of ways to be successful, both personally and in business, and there's no standard or cookie cutter way to do it. Uh, and Re Renee has shown that. Um, but this business conference that we're going to be having uh, a week from Saturday. Yes. Um, you know, one of the topics in there, uh, which is a favorite of mine, which um, you know, may not be a favorite of yours, but big data. 
you know, and you know, coming from the background that I come from uh, in the CPA industry and, mm -hmm. uh, and particularly in the banking industry, uh, very automated, very computerized, has been for many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, high volume of transactions that are occurring, all the checks clearing, and et cetera, et cetera. So I've been working in the big data arena for a while. And it's amazing to me how much information can really be obtained there. It's all there, it's all available. The question is, how do you access it and how do right. you use it? Uh, and that's what, um, you know, the speakers that's going to talk in that area is um, want to be able to, you know, frame that and break it down to be able to share that. Because I think, you know, when we think about big data, a lot of times, you know, it's especially like if you own a business and you have so many different components that you're trying to manage to make your business successful and figure out what is it you need to do and how do you need to use this information they want to try to give a, a frame of reference mm -hmm. for that. And, you know, what's so good about our audience is that we have people that are probably no exposure to big data, some that's kind of in the middle, and some like you, Reg, that know a lot about big data. So how do we give everybody a nugget to walk away with? Right, and I think part of it is just making them aware of what's right. out there. And once they start thinking about it, they can probably come up with some ideas on how to, to tap into it and what would be useful and what wouldn't. I mean, right. one, one part of the big data um, or a component of big data that I never really thought much about uh, was, for example, what's in our email systems, you know, right. the contacts that we have in there and some of the notes that may be there that we have for our contacts. I mean, I've got several thousand contacts um, different addresses, different right. locations, different notes. Um, I've got my calendar. I've got all of this information that's in my personal computer. And if you multiply that by the number of employees that are in right. a company, there's a whole bunch of little data components that when you start bringing it all together and, and combining it with what's in the accounting system or what's in the sales uh, force or sales system, uh, right. There's a tremendous amount of information that can be tapped into and utilized. And that's the goal for this conference is to show our um, attendees how to use it. Maybe, Reg, next year you can join us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. I, uh, I always enjoy that. Um, you know, and I notice uh, supply chain management is going to be on there. I, I notice blockchain technologies. Now, that's a term that I'm not familiar with. Right. Can you elaborate on that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, so, you know, not to steal any thunder away from any of our speakers, but I think, you know, it's something that when you think about blockchain technologies, you think about Bitcoin and financial uh, analysis. Yes, right. And they're one of um, the, the person that we have speaking in this, they want to kind of... Um, take it in a different direction so to unleash some disruptive um, innovation so the disruptive innovation so groundbreaking yes groundbreaking right. innovation so that it moves it beyond the financial analysis and it offers you know ways that it can be used that maybe real estate um, health care utilities and even in the government sector hmm. so I'm excited to learn more about that yeah, too. that sounds like an interesting topic yeah you know, and this is gonna be on, on next Saturday yes maybe I'll make a trip out and just hear that <laughs> You know, but yes. it sounds like you've got some, you, you got cloud data security now, yes. you know, and you also have uh, cyber crimes and cyber security and then cloud right. data security. I mean, security in the internet is a big topic these days. It, it is, and it's, you know, the thing about it is it's a benefit to know about it, but then there's some risk involved. And I think, you know, the benefit is, you know, that you know that you can um, secure data in those places that you have... Um, it's a convenience for the user. But I think the risk involved more so is that, you know, how do you avoid scams? You know, how do you protect your data? And when is enough information enough? You know, because we're always getting asked to supply things. So, you know, how do you know your data is secure? And one of the things we try to do is just not bring one person. We try to bring people from the local, the state, and the federal level so they can share a comprehensive perspective of you know, that particular right. topic and what people can expect. And they all come with their own individual experiences, right. you know, that they can share so people can right. get these different perspectives that you mentioned. Right. Uh, and, you know, it's important to remember, I believe, that, uh, you know, what's in the cloud yes. is one thing, and they can have that encrypted and it could be rock solid secure. 
Right. But if the access point to tap into that information right. is weak, then the whole thing is weak. It's the old proverb, you know, it, it, it's only as strong as its weakest link. Right. And so if you've got weak controls at the user end with passwords or access to the terminal to tap into the information, then all of this control over here, all this strength and protection is wasted. Right. And, you know, it's funny you mentioned that, mentioned that because last year one of our um, speakers demonstrated uh, how it was so easy just to hack into your data and just to be able to get whatever they needed. Well, you know, and that's, that's scary because I've seen <laughs> examples of just having these smartphones, right. you know, and being able to, once the smartphone, and a lot of us, I think, automatically have the smartphones um, log into a network that it's familiar right. with, um, and there's not a lot of controls in the smartphone itself to protect access to that network. Mm -hmm. And that, that can be a big weak link. Yes. And we always think sometimes that these things happen outside of the organization, but they can happen in the organization too. So it's just one of those um, awareness clause that, you know, we want to just share information with others. Right. So now this is the second or third year you've done this? This is the second year. Second We're really year. excited. Yes. All right. And so obviously the first year must have been a success. And then this year uh, you're going to do it again. Um, how many people are you expecting to, to come? Well, this year we're expecting 300 um, attendees to come to this event. So this would be an opportunity not only to learn something and, and get exposed to some of these uh, technology and controls and classes, but also maybe even an opportunity to network a little bit and meet other people? Oh, sh oh, definitely. Anytime you go to a conference, you sit down beside somebody and, you know, it's just human nature, especially in Hawaii, the ohana spirit, you know, hi, how are you? And the question comes, what do you do? And that's how people can network also, you know, as they're walking back and forth um, during a conference or even in sessions after, during, you know, the time from one session to another, great opportunity just to network you know, perhaps get a business card from somebody to follow up later, or you just never know who can help you with what. Well, you know, and having 300 people in Hawaii all together at one place with a common interest, yes. there's going to be a lot of opportunity there to, to meet yes. and get to know others. And, you know, it's nice to have a little support group around you. As a matter of fact, I've always found that to be one of the um, game changers when okay. you've got a business and you're trying to grow it. Uh, you know, having people that you can go to, almost like right. a, a, an advisor type of capacity, people right. that got experience in certain areas that maybe you don't have. Right. You know, and it can be a, an unofficial advisory group, if you will. Right. But developing a net network in an environment like this is, right. is definitely one of the values. Right. And, you know, we all are probably after the same goal. We're just probably going around it differently. And this is a great opportunity to bring all the knowledge that we all have together and to be able to share it because technology is rising on the Hawaiian Islands, and why not share it from an academic, from an um, sure. information systems and technology, from a business, and even our local entrepreneur perspective. Well, and it changes so fast. Right. I mean, what you taught last year and what you're teaching this year, it's going to have changed a little bit during right. that 12-month period. So things, right. it happens, yes. uh, and it, it moves quick. It does. And so it's, it takes a little bit of effort to, to keep up to date with all of this. Yes. Now, what do you think would be the, the, the stereotype of company or person that would come to this conference? What, what is that perfect fit? Well, um, that might be a different question than who do I think and who we're looking for. It just seems like business owners would need it. Um, People in the information systems and technology field mm. would need it. Students in college that's learning, not just in the University of Phoenix, but in surrounding um, colleges. People in the military could use this information. So it's something for everybody mm. who has an uh, interest in business technology. You know, and you know, people in the military, and it just triggered something. Yes. I mean, with this networking capability and with people coming into the conference, if they've got some skills that might be useful, it might there might even be a possibility that they can find a company that might be looking for good people. Right. You know, right. so there there could be 
don't want to make any promises, but there could be employment opportunities that they might be able to find if they were coming in and networking through the, the 300 people that would be there. Well, I'm not, a, I, I can't make that decision, but you know, anything is possible. You know, absolutely. Anything is possible. You know, um, so anybody who does show up, they bring a resume, maybe they can pass <laughs> it out and find something. That'd be great. Um, now, how do you find the instructors and the, the lecturers to be presenting? How does that work? Well, the people, so what, what we do, the people that's going to be presenting at the conference, we talk to our faculty practitioners, we talk to our students, and we have connections in the community that we talk to, organizations that, you know, suggest speakers for us. Good. And that, then, you know, uh, are experts in those fields. Well, and I would imagine if they did well last year, you'll invite them to come back this year. Yes, yeah, you know, we have invited some people back. Um, not to say that others, maybe next year they'll come back. It just depends on the topic and what we're trying to do. Okay. And if somebody did want to speak at your conference, how would they reach out and show their interest in doing that? Well, this year is full, but in the future conferences, they can always um, email me at Green at phoenix.edu. Okay, so why don't you say that one more time? Sure, it's Renee.Green, and it's green without the E, at phoenix.edu. Very good, and you'll be at the conference, right? Yes, and I all look right. forward to meeting all of you. So if anybody was having any interest in, in getting more involved with it, they could always find you at the conference. Oh, sure, of course. All right, very good. Well, you know, Renee, we uh, really enjoyed having you on the show today. We're about well, ready to you. wrap up. Thank you, and I've enjoyed uh, being here. Did, uh, did you have any last words of uh, thoughts or anything for the, the, the people out there that, uh, you know, uh, that you can give them some valuable tip to take with them? Yes. You know, one of the things I know that um, people might think, well, you know, I don't work in business or technology, so I probably you know, maybe this is not for me, but maybe it is because we all use some type of device at home and we always want to ensure that we know the risk involved and the benefits involved. So there's a nugget for everybody, whether you're in business, technology, whether you're in the healthcare department, whether you're a student, whether you're an engineer, a postal worker or whatever, there's always a nugget that you can take away with, you know, right. from this conference and we hope to see you. Well, and that's true for anything that you go to. You need yes. to, you get out of it what you put into it. So right. go out looking for some value and you'll find it. Right. Very good. Well, Renee, it was great to have you here. Thank you. Well, thank you, you so much. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 3, 2, 2 to 2.30. Uh, I hope to see you next time. Uh, until then, aloha.